Thanks so much. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool to be here. Um, I guess about 18 years ago, I was thinking this morning, I was in your same position going to, to a broadcast school um, in St. Louis. So I kind of, you know, just getting a quick tour of the facilities. I mean, even though back then we were using cassette tapes, uh, you know, technology's changed a little bit to show you how old I am. But it's, you know, basically doing the same, same thing and, 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 you know, going to work every day to try to perfect our craft, whatever it's going to be in this industry. Um, I'm pretty fortunate to, to my background. I grew up in the industry. My late father was a broadcaster. My brother right now is a, a hockey broadcaster for the St. Louis Blues. Um, the first chunk of my career I spent, spent is uh, a hockey broadcaster. And I, I know, a, you know, especially at the age that you guys are at, um, there's a lot of options. You think about what your career choices are going to be. And I think about, you know, now about five years ago, I went from being a hockey broadcaster to doing a heck of a lot more. And I guess the biggest theme I could recommend to you today is to, to, to be open to anything. Because, you know, the more you can do, the more you're going to work. Um, in most of our industries, a lot of times we're freelancers. You know, this past October, it was like a field hockey game Thursday, women's soccer Friday, men's soccer Saturday, then college men's soccer Sunday. So it was all four different things, college, pro. And if you start to get ahead of yourself too much, I mean, you're literally Friday for that first game, well, you'll start to say someone's name inevitably, or you'll start to say what the coach told you and mix it up. So what I try to do is gather all your information, have your conference calls, then, and then kind of put it away. Because what you do is you go to do a live event, okay, you're all over it, but right when you sign off and say good night, forget everything. Because then it's all of a sudden tomorrow's game. So you, you, you kind of get all your, your notes, but I don't really start, especially when you're busy, I, it's until like 6 a.m. game day when then I'll really start to focus in on that game and put my, my thoughts on the paper, however I, or however you, you, know, you, you gather your notes. But um, it's, it, you know, if, if you're on site too, it's, it's that morning, let's say a hockey game at night, you're going, you're going to talk to the coach at morning skate. You're going to talk to the student information directors. If it's a pro sport, you're going to talk to a PR director. I mean, they're always your, your such valuable assets because they follow the program every day. You try to talk to players, um, too, if you get a little story. Um, just talk to anyone you can. If it's a pro, pro event, too, like in, in the NHL or uh, you'll have a morning skate, it's, there's a lot of people there. There's journalists. You'll talk to the beat writers or the broadcasters, too. That's always a, a tremendous resource. Just, you, you, Instead of just sitting around with your hands on, you know, on the stands, it's like get active because that's when you you can kind of be like an old school journalist and you know get little um, get cool little stories to, to add color and flavor to the broadcast to kind of make a difference you know just from the regular guy I guess. What's your experience with like uh, criticizing players but still trying to keep a relationship with them where you don't burn a bridge where you can still have that chance to talk to them? before a game or after a game? Yeah, that's a, another superb question. The, there's a big difference between co covering college athletes and pro, too. There's all, uh, you know, like we, we this, this girl struggled. She's an all-class world athlete German for this field hockey championship. She was awful in the championship game. Well, I'm not going to say that. She's a college athlete. She's not getting paid. Uh, but she was bad. She had a bad game. If she was a pro, well, we would have, we you know, probably highlighted her four mistakes more so. That's, that's one of the biggest differences, too, is because when you start making money and you're a professional, um, the expectations are a little harsher, especially, I mean, we're in Chicago, so, you know, we're not, we're not in Oklahoma. We're, this is a big market. So, uh, you know, I think you'll hear broadcasters be a little more critical, but at the end of the day, too, is, I mean, uh, you, you look at the teams that, that you're not, you're not going to hear, you're not going to turn on the Cubs broadcast and necessarily, necessarily hear them get slammed, because... At the end of the day, with rights fees, you always usually work for the team. So that's also a concern. So it's, it's such a slippery slope, too, first off, when you want to be critical. Um, you know, the Chicago Fire struggled this past year. When you're losing, you know, like nine of 12 games or if you're having a bunch of run of ties, you want to be careful because at the end of the day, too, you're, 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 you're reading season ticket promotions. You're hoping someone at home is watching the game and, and say, man, I want to go to a soccer game. So you want to, it, it's, it's a very slippery slope with criticism. And with, with players, too, you know, back to your question, a lot of times, especially like in the NHL, we're getting on the same plane with them or the bus. You, you're, you're running every day. Um, soccer's a little different. They, we fly commercial and we'll fly separate. But we stay in a hotel with them. Um, we're at training. And I think the big thing is I learned from NHL, former NHL players working with them, too, is if you're going to be critical of someone, especially – you know, yeah, I played, but I, I'm not a professional. Um, and it's a lot, as we know, it's a lot easier from 
sitting at home or being in the press box to what these gifted athletes do. Um, it's, you're gonna make, and, and doing live broadcasting, I can really relate to people who make mistakes on the fly. So it's, because it's life, it's gonna happen. And, and these people just have cameras pointed at them and 20,000 fans. So I think the big thing is the lesson, if I'm gonna criticize someone when it's, when it's warranted, um, I always say to myself what I say to their face. Because you're gonna see, you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna be a professional, you're gonna be at practice, or you're gonna be on the team plane or bus, you're gonna see them. So would you say it to their face? Because a lot, you know, you, you've heard a broadcaster sometimes, they'll get a little too personal, you know, and, and, and rip someone a little too much maybe. But you also don't wanna just sugarcoat everything too, and, and everything is, you know, unicorns and, and fun. Because it's not always, it's, there's mistakes sometimes. So that's the biggest difference is knowing what game you're calling, if it's a, if it's a pro game or a college game, and then, it, you know, as a play-by-play -play broadcaster too, it's, it's usually, especially if it's criticism, yeah, that's gonna usually be the person to my right that, that played the game you know, at a collegiate level or at a pro level. That's their job usually for the criticism. So I, I, I can kind of be the scapegoat to team up and be like, hey, what'd you think about that play? You know, so that's how you get around that. Went right to a broadcast school just like this in St. Louis. And while I was doing that, I would go and just started to broadcast anything I could. I'd go to a vacant press box for a, for a hockey game. There was a, a little low-level junior team that played just like an amateur rank. I'd go sit in the corner and start to do that, do stuff like that. And then, you know, next thing you start to do, a, there was a pro roller hockey league back then. Started to do that a little bit in the summer and, you know, the right, right job came open and, and I started to call pro hockey. I can say, especially in today's world, is just be diversified, do as much as you can. Um, and that's, you know, that's what, that's what's very cool about places like this.